Hey everybody, welcome back to another quick tip. In our last video, we covered how to log into your servers with SSH keys so that you don't have to constantly type passwords all the time and it's actually a more secure way to do it. If you didn't already see that one, check out the link to that. Today, I wanna to take that one step further and I'm gonna show you how to build a config file that will let you treat your commonly accessed SSH servers in different ways, depending on how you're accessing them. So for example, if you've got a bunch of servers that you use particular usernames for or security types for, rather than have to every single time type the username at the host name, you can build out a config file that will say, hey, when I'm accessing this server, go ahead and just assume that it's this username and certain things like that. And you can also use wildcards and variables. You can define whole subnets, uh, host names. It's, it's really a great way to do it. So let me quickly show you how to do that. Go ahead and bring up your terminal. Take a look in the hidden SSH folder. So that's ls.ssh. So the dot indicates that it's a hidden folder. And you'll see you've got your common things in there. So we've already got like our RSA key pair that we generated before and our known host file. So let's go ahead and navigate into that SSH folder cd.ssh, so that's that hidden folder. ls, we can see our key pairs and our known host file. Let's create a new one. It's gonna be called config and no file extension. So just nano config. And in here, I'm gonna paste in a sample here. You can grab this example off of my website. Uh, this will just show you kind of how the formatting goes for all of these. But this is a good one where I've got a lot of examples of different uh, host types, uh, where I'm working with subnets, I'm working with variables, um, and I'm working with different things like, for example, if you're using Raspberry Pis, you know the username is always Pi, right? That's the default user. So what we can do is if you know what your different Pi host names are out there, you can build out a host section. So in here, I've got three separate host sections. So I've defined one that has two different subnets in it, a 192.168 network and a 10 dot network, and also any host that has the name Docker in it. So with the asterisk at the beginning, and at the end, that means anything with the Docker host name in it. And we can also exclude specific hosts from this too. So if you prefix it with an exclamation mark and then give it an IP address or a host name or any of the other rules you did before, this will tell it to ignore those that may have been caught in our previous configuration. So that's really helpful too. So you can say, hey, I want this entire subnet uh, except for this host name or these couple of host names or these couple of IP addresses. And then here's the, the rules to follow for those. So the first line there that strict host key checking, set that to no. That's the one where when the first time you SSH into it, it says that it sees its thumbprint and it asks yes or no, do you want to save this to your known host file? Strict host key checking bypasses that. It says, don't worry about it. We're on an internal network. I don't care about that. Just bypass it each time. And then secondly, because I'm also using that, I don't want to write out that big long known host file. So for these particular hosts, I want to write out the known host file to dev null. So it's basically just going to drop those off. It's going to ignore those. So we don't build up this big list with a bunch of thumbprints in it that we just don't need. And then the user line, that's the user that you commonly log into that server for, or that list of servers. Okay, and then I have a second one here for specific ones for our RockPy service, and I just have a different user defined for that. And then I have another one here for a project, and same thing. This is a Raspberry Pi, so the user is Pi. So with this in place, if I save this file and exit out, and now if I SSH to, for example, SSH RockPy01, permanently added to the list of known hosts, so it didn't prompt me for that SSH thumbprint, and it took me straight into that host, but it's under a different username, this OMG name, right? So it took that from the config file, and it applied those settings and logged me in. Hey guys, this is just a really quick tip. If you're not already, please subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, hit the notification bell so you see the next one coming in, and I will see you in the next one.